On the 17th of September, upcoming Miami rapper Spot'em Got'em was driving a Dodge Charger on I-95 when his car was hit with gunfire, leaving 22 bullet holes on the driver's side. Authorities have confirmed this was not a shootout, but a drive-by shooting. Spot'em is lucky to be still alive, but ever since the incident, there have been various reports from different media outlets about why he was shot. Was it just another gang-related shooting? Was he shot because he snitched? Did he snitch? Hold on to your questions, because in this video, we'll share with you information about the drive-by shooting that the media won't tell you. Spot'em Gotham's Early Life The story of Spot'em Gotham follows a popular narrative of most new rappers in the game. Huge potential and talent, about to really blow up, but then get dragged down by gang violence they get themselves involved in. Spot'em Gotham's story is a bit similar to that of Tay K, another rapper who blew up as a teenager, but his career stalled due to issues that have nothing to do with his music. But thankfully, Spot'em is alive. His real name is Nehemiah Lamar Hardin, and although there isn't much information about his upbringing, some reports are speculating that Spot'em's father wasn't always around as he allegedly always had run-ins with the law. Hence, Spot'em was exposed to a life of drug dealing and trafficking, gang violence and killings at a very few age. He was born in Bohemia, New York, but grew up in Jacksonville, Florida. Growing up in Jacksonville, Spot'em Gotham stated that there were times that he had to dodge bullets while going to school. Spot'em Gotham's introduction to rap was through what you might call a very bizarre means. His uncles used to record their own raps out of a garage, and Spot'em stated that from watching them, he fell in love with hip hop and started learning how to rap. The biggest influence on his career is none other than Chicago rapper Chief Keef, another rapper who became famous at a very young age. Spot'em's music is influenced and inspired by Keith's melodic style of rapping and his characteristically slurred delivery of lyrics, which is the catalyst for what is now known as mumble rap. Spot'em is on a list that includes other rappers such as Young Thug, 21 Savage, Young Boy Never Broke Again, Lil Pump, XXXTentacion, Lil Uzi Vert, Juice World, and Tay K, among others who were influenced by Sosa Style. Spot'em also stated that Keith's heavy use of ad libs is another factor that influences sound. However, growing up on the streets of Jacksonville wasn't always a smooth ride for Spot'em Gotham as he got into trouble with the law a few times. Spot'em Gotham's run-ins with the law In June 2017, Spot'em was arrested alongside one of his friends, Chadrick Daniels, in Duval County. Authorities claimed that the two had been traveling in a suspicious vehicle on the 1100 block of Sand Lake Drive. The young rapper was charged with Grand Theft Auto and carrying a concealed weapon. What makes this arrest more fascinating is the fact that Spot'em Gotham couldn't even drive at this time. However, reports claim that there was a third person who was part of the robbery attempt, but he drove off and abandoned Spot'em and Daniels when he saw the police approaching. The Jacksonville rapper was arrested again in July 2021. Spot'em was scheduled to perform at the Rolling Loud concert, but he was arrested inside an Aventura hotel room. Spot'em was arrested for several charges, which included aggravated assault with a firearm, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, and accessory after the fact to a felony. According to various reports, police entered Spot'em Gotham's room, located at the hotel, at just before 9.30 a.m. with an arrest warrant. He was found laying in bed at the time of his arrest with an AK-47 pistol next to him, according to an arrest report. The rapper's arrest was for a case in June, where Spot'em Gotham allegedly was in a car with several friends when they broke the gate at a parking garage located near 10th Street and Collins Avenue. Harden reportedly pulled out a semi-automatic weapon at a person who tried to stop the vehicle before fleeing the scene. Spot'em Gotham has allegedly been arrested other times, but records from his previous arrests are all sealed as he was a minor when they happened. But while he is allegedly involved in various gang activities, this hasn't stopped Spot'em Gotham from chasing his dreams of becoming a rapper. From Jacksonville to Billboard charts Spot'em Gotham started rapping as early as the age of 18. His breakout single was a song titled Street Gossip. His first EP was titled Osama Story, which was released July 2019. The EP, which had five songs, was self-released as Spot'em had not been signed yet at this time. In December 2020, he released his debut mixtape, Final Destination. In April 2020, Spot'em Gotham released his biggest song, Beatbox. Lyrically, Beatbox is about how Spot'em Gotham's pistol is so loud, he can make a beatbox and contains violent rhymes. The song was quite successful, and he made a first remix to the song featuring Pooh Shicey, and this took the song to a whole nother level. Beatbox 2 was listed as one of the tracks on his debut mixtape, Final Destination. Similarly to Lil Nas X's Old Town Road, the song became a massive hit after it was adopted for the Junebug Challenge. The song went viral and debuted at number 84 on the Billboard Hot 100 and peaked at number 12 on the chart. Spot'em Got'em released four other remixes of the song. With Beatbox 3 featuring a freestyle that Baby made to the song, another remix featuring Mulatto, Beatbox 4 featuring NLE Choppa, and Beatbox 5 featuring Polo G. 
He released a second mixtape titled Most Wanted in May 2021. However, while Spotem got him was successful on the charts, he was involved in a war back in Jacksonville that nearly took his life. But before we delve into that, don't forget to like, drop a comment below, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. The War Between ATK and KTA The War Between ATK and KTA Gone are the days where gang wars involved painting graffiti on walls. These days, social media is the gang graffiti of the 1980s. The ATK and KTA are the two main gangs involved in a deadly war in Jacksonville, Florida. The war has claimed lives on both sides, and rumors are circulating that this might be the reason why Spotem Got Him was shot. It's unclear what began the war between both sides, but many believe that the beef has been passed down from generations. But this war reportedly began because of the death of Zion Brown, who's the cousin of KTA leader Julio Fulio. KTA, which allegedly means killed them all, is a street gang based in Jacksonville, Florida. Some rumors speculate that KTA evolved out of a criminal organization known as Problem Child Entertainment. One of the gang's leaders is Julio Fulio, who's a friend of Spotem Got Him and a principal actor in the war. Fulio is also known as Lil Six, as he named himself after the sixth block of Hilltop Village apartment where he grew up. Similarly to his friend Spotem Got Him, there were times that Julio Fulio had to dodge bullets on his way to school. In fact, the rapper states that he bought his first gun while he was in 7th grade to protect himself from older men who they were beefing with. The death of Julio's cousin, Zion Brown, might have been what began the war. On May 27, 2017, a member of the ATK smashed through the glass door of Brown's home with a brick at around 1.30 a.m. The killer, who was later identified as DeAndre Thomas, aka Trey Shorty, fired multiple shots that killed Zion Brown and also injured Brown's two sisters, who were aged 16 and 9 years old. He was identified as a shooter by the 16-year-old girl who he was allegedly friends with on Facebook and sentenced to life imprisonment. Thomas was also a friend of Young and Ace. According to various sources, this incident began the war between the two gangs. KCA holds territory in the north and south side of Jacksonville. Spotem Got Him, who's originally from Lackawanna, Florida, claims the Arlington area in the south side of Jacksonville and belongs to the gang called Young and Reckless, which is popularly known as YNR. YNR are allies of KTA and share their hatred for ATK. Many fans are speculating that the violent lyrics in most of Spotem Got Him's songs are about the alleged crimes he committed in this war. Some other popular YNR members are YNR Mookie, Cho, Lil Rong, and YNR Slugger T. On the other side of the war are the ATK gang. It's not entirely clear what ATK means, but some reports claim it means Ace's top killers. Some say it means aim to kill, while some sources state that it simply means attack. Various reports claim that the gang's leader is rapper Young and Ace. Ace grew up in Melvin Park of Jacksonville. Many of ATK's members live in Orange Park, Jacksonville, and ATK holds territory in the east and west of Jacksonville. According to Julio Fulio, there are three reasons why gangs beef in Jacksonville, and there if a gang member disrespects another gang member, neighborhood turf wars, and disrespect for dead friends. We don't support gang violence of any kind, but following the death of Fulio's cousin, KTA felt the need to respond, and they did. KTA's response After the death of Zion Brown, KTA allegedly responded by going after Young and Ace and his friends. On June 5, 2018, Young and Ace was out with three of his friends to celebrate the birthday of his best friend, 23, aka RJ, whose real name is Royal Devon Smith Jr. Other friends that were part of the celebration was Ace's blood brother, Trayvon Bullard, aka Quan Quan, and another friend called Four, aka Kobe, whose real name is Jacoby Deshaw Grover. The four friends have posted various videos on social media about the celebration and them going out for dinner. However, these videos might have also led to their death. The video showed exactly where the friends were and most likely led their killers to their location. The friends were having dinner at Wasabi Japanese Steakhouse in Jacksonville's St. John's Town Center, an open air mall in the southeast of Jacksonville. Ace has stated in an interview that he felt like there were people hiding in the parking lot waiting for him and his friends to leave. He said, Ain't nobody just gonna creep up on me like that. They had to be hiding and sitting outside. Ace and his friends left the restaurant and on the way driving home, they stopped at a red light at 295 in Town Center Parkway. This is where another car pulled up next to their Chevy sedan, opened fire, and then sped off. According to a witness, over 120 bullets were shot at Ace's car. Young and Ace was shot eight times, but he survived, while his three other friends unfortunately lost their lives. This shooting effectively turned the war to a bloodbath and has led to retaliatory killings with both sides losing numerous members. Various reports are circulating that Spotem Got Him might have been shot for two reasons, either as part of the war or shot for snitching on his own KTA members. Why Spotem Got Him Was Shot Spotem Got Him was shot five times and various fans are speculating about why he was shot. 
Some fans believe he was shot by ATK members, while other fans are speculating that he was shot by his own KTA members. This is because another Jacksonville rapper known as Spinna Benz, who's a member of ATK, posted a paperwork on social media alleging that Spot Em Got Em spoke to Fez about his own fellow gang members. Fans are speculating that he was allegedly shot for snitching, while other fans believe he was shot by ATK members. You might not know exactly who shot Spot Em Got Em, but one thing you now know is information about the shooting that the media might not share with you.